All right, so here is a first little lesson for the Python class. Um, I told you guys to download and install Python uh, 3.star, whatever the latest version is. So what you want to do is go to python.org, or you can Google Python, it takes you to the same thing. There's a Downloads tab right here. There's the All Releases by default. It's got the 2.7 version, which you know some people like better or the 3.4 version. We're going to use the 3.0 version because, <coughs> excuse me, the 2.7 version, um, the differences between the two aren't really going to affect us in the class. Uh, the only problem we might have is some of the old libraries that we might want to use might not be converted, so we'll just go with it on the fly. So just click the little download button, downloading uh, Python here, I'll open it up. I'm going to install it for all users. I'm the only one. I have a different install location that I'm going to put it. I'll put it in my apps folder on my D drive. Sure, install all that stuff. Doesn't really matter as long as I get the interpreter. Uh, as this is installing, well, I'm going to hit OK there. That doesn't look like it's going to take long, but one thing you're going to want to do after it's installed is set your path. Now, this is kind of off the fly, but I think you're going to go to your system here. I'm running Windows 8. Uh, if you need instructions on how to do it on a different operating system, I can probably give you that as well. I'm going to go to Advanced System Settings. So that tab has environment variables. You're going to want to click that. Um, what we're going to do is inside of our path environment variable, we are going to edit it and put the Python bin directory at the end of the path. I believe Python's already installed now, so I'm going to verify that. There's my Python 3.4. Uh, I got python.exe. So here's a little trick you can do. Uh, CMD in the folder that you're in, and it will open up a command prompt in that folder. So we're in Python, Python version, okay. It definitely appears to be installed. So what I'm going to do is just add this path. Oh, not that one. So the CMD trick is, is all fine and dandy, but it kind of messes up some copy and pasting. Uh, we're going to go to the end of this with a semicolon, paste that in there, hit OK, hit OK again, hit OK again. Now one thing you need to know about the environment variables is they're loaded up whenever you open up a command prompt. So I'm going to close this command prompt. Um, Windows R brings up your run menu. I'm going to type CMD. doesn't matter what folder I'm in. You can tell I'm a Linux guy right away. Uh, I'm going to type Python and you can see that it's now in my path. So I can reference my Python interpreter from any folder on my system now. So that's pretty much all you need to install Python and get started. Um, a lot of people use idle. I don't use idle. If it's your personal preference to use idle, please use it if that's what you're comfortable with, but it's not necessary. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to show you guys on what to do uh, if you're a Windows user is downloading Notepad++. Uh, it's free, it's open source, it's pretty awesome. Just go to download, you know, there, there's actually a link right here, download the latest version, and I think they're super smart people, they already have some, you know, detection scripts as to what, uh, what operating system you're on. If you just hit download, it'll download it. Then same process, install it, all that, that stuff. Uh, I already have Notepad++ installed though. So what I'm going to show you to do after you get Notepad++ installed, because you will drive me crazy if you don't do this, is you want to make sure to go to View, uh, Show Symbol, make sure you check Whitespace and Tab, because if you submit me Python scripts that have a tab character in them, that's probably going to be 50% off right there. Because, as you notice, one of the things I told you to do in the class is to familiarize yourself with the PEP8 programming guide. So 
you can just Google PEP8. So PEP8 is a style guide for Python code. And it's pretty long. I don't expect you to read the entire thing. But code layout is one of the very first things. And then it has a tabs or spaces right here. So spaces are the preferred indentation method. Tabs should only be used to remain consistent with code that already is indented with tabs. So don't create code indented with tabs and you will not get docked points. Uh, another thing to note is uh, maximum line limits. Um, if, if you exceed 72 characters, um, PyLint, which is a Python code formatting um, evaluation utility, is going to yell at you. And that's one of the first things I'm going to do with your script when you submit it, is I'm going to run it through PyLint. Because it's very convenient. It helps maintain clean scripts. It has all sorts of neat warnings. It's essentially a first pass compiler for Python, if, if you've ever used a compiling language before. Uh, so Python 3 explicitly disallows mixing the use of tabs and spaces. Okay, So you cannot mix them. Your code will not work. Uh, that being said, one thing that I thought it did reference here, and maybe it's actually in the indentation, blocks. Uh, it says to use four spaces per indentation level. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set those two options up inside Notepad++. And if you're a Linux user or a Mac user and you use VI or whatever, you're on your own. Um, if, if you really don't know how to do it, just email me and I can help you. I have a Mac and I'm a Linux user myself, but I, I think if you're using Linux you should know how to set your uh, vim config file up correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to preferences under settings and then if you see here it's got uh, tab settings it's about halfway down. You want default tab size just click that put 4 hit enter and then make sure this check is here that says replace by space. So. I do a lot of Ruby development and Ruby has a lot of scoping so normally I use a, a tab size of 4 or a 2 rather so I'm just going to go down to my my Ruby uncheck the default so I can always use 2 when I develop in Ruby and that's pretty much all you need to know so And that is a Python script. So I'm just going to save it to make sure everything is working correctly. I'm going to save it inside of a new folder here. Oh, I might have a development folder. Uh, mm, no, I don't. I'll just make one. I'm going to call this hello world.py and make sure you change that so it removes the .txt from it. Now you notice we now that we've saved the file uh, as a .py extension, um, Notepad++ has automatically detected that. Um, you can actually go in and uh, force the language that you're using if you haven't saved it yet. So. Just going to click Python there and it'll automatically make it as Python. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is change my style because solarized is pretty much the best thing ever. So, and you can see that there's a tiny little pip in there that's showing you that that's a space. So, if I put a whole line of spaces there, you can see little pips and then it keeps the auto indentation level. So, what I want to do is show you a tab and see I hit tab just puts four spaces there. Now what you'll see if you've opened up a script and they don't have the replace tabs with spaces what you're gonna see then is gonna look like this. It's gonna be an arrow. So if you see these arrows those are the tab character and that is how you get docked points if you have those tab characters in there. So don't do that. Replace them with spaces. Be a good developer. And 
Let me save this one more time. I'm going to open up my command prompt again. Go to the D drive. Go to my Python folder. List it out. So I have a 43 byte file there called Hello World. I'm going to call Python on my Hello World. Oh, so I need to put parentheses around it. This is a Python 3 thing. They, they wanted to explicit their break code whenever they did this so you would know if you're 3.0 plus or 2.7. Print used to not require parentheses and now it does. No big deal. Throw my parentheses, parentheses around it and there we go. I have hello world output it to the screen. And that is all for this first video. That is downloading, installing Python, downloading, installing Notepad++, configuring your path for Python, configuring Notepad++ to, here, let me make this big. Hello. See, I got the parentheses there now. Configuring Notepad++ to be more pip8 friendly, and then executing your script um, from the command line. So that's that's pretty much it.